Hej! Jag heter Sofia Talvik och ni tittar på Foster Clark Show. Foster Clark! This is the second uh, show of my tour. So I'm just starting out a four month tour and you know, couldn't be better. Looking at all the people here, it's wonderful. And uh, I think we just have two more people walking through the door that missed the whole introduction about knowing nothing about me. <laughs> Hopefully when I'm done, you'll know much more about me. Fabulous night here in Princeton, New Jersey. Thank you. Yeah, second night of your tour. I know, I know. You're on the road for how long? It's going to be a four-month tour. Um, we're doing 17 states on this tour, and um, so we'll be done like mid-October or something like that. Oh, yeah. mid-October. Mm -hmm. And then you're already talking about setting up something uh, April. In the spring, the yes. spring. We'll, uh, we'll be back uh, and start our next tour in New Mexico in February next year and work our way through the south and up the east coast so we'll probably be here around late april early may or so you got your little chief to get you all over from date to date to date yeah it's my 1989 uh rv uh, winnebago micro warrior we call him little chief and we had him since 2015 and little chief always breaks down at least once every tour so we started out this tour just like a couple of days ago and we already had problems with the brakes we already had problems with the starter so i'm hoping once we fix this the rest of the tour will be smooth well yeah you got it out of the way early <laughs> yeah i hope so that's all we always try to go places to camp when we have a couple of days off you know you can't play every day of the week you would be completely exhausted so i try to have like two three days off every week and um, if I don't have to drive far, then uh, I try to find like a really nice place in nature to go camping, just, you know, be away from people, just relax, because all the shows are very, you know, you're like socializing, you're meeting so many people, so you kind of also have to go away and be on your own for a little bit. And so I just love places in America where you can find really beautiful nature, which is basically all over if you look for it. Um, but I also kind of plan the tours so I can go through some nice like uh, national parks and stuff. So on this tour, for example, we're going to be a couple of days up in Yellowstone and we've been through southern Utah, all the beautiful parks there. And, and so, I mean, I couldn't say one place in the U.S. that like is very special to me, but I, I do really like, you know, the big sky country states like Montana, Idaho, Wyoming. Because it's just so free and open and and you can just go parking, like camping and parking everywhere and, and there's no one saying, hey, you can't park here overnight, you know. Sometimes on the on the coast, that, that could be a little bit hard, especially in California. They're like, you can't park here with your RV, are you homeless? And so, so I really like those states where it's just like nature and, you know, you can just relax. <laughs> Do the sea. We were noticing all the uh, the full sound that you got tonight. Yeah. With your cigar box, with yeah. your plywood, with yeah. your that's your husband. Yeah. With your husband running the uh, the sound is yeah phenomenal. Thank you. You beautiful team. Thanks so much. Yeah, we um, we enjoy playing together. You know. Yeah. Was all that drumming your feet, or yes. did he he wasn't no. doing anything? No, or? that's all my feet. I um, I wear my boots, my cowboy boots. Oh. <laughs> and uh, I have um, so I have the cigar box, which is kind of like a little um, stomp box. It has a, a pair of headphones in it. So my husband actually built that. So it kind of and I stand on this plywood plate, and um, it's uh, it picks up the vibrations when I stomp and turns it into this drum sound. And on my other foot, I have a little foot tambourine, so you get like both the, the drum, like the bass drum sound and a little bit of the foot tambourine. So. The Ranger Bob, and he had a selection of <laughs> cigar boxes available. So he said like, yeah, I can, I can give you some cigar boxes. So I got a cigar box, and I got a broken pair of headphones, and I put a headphone pieces inside of the cigar box, padded it with some cotton or whatever thing I had, ran the cord out through my mixer, 
processed it a little bit like a kick drum with some uh, EQ, some gates and it sounded amazing so, <laughs> and we put it on a piece of we I don't know I think we meant went to like a Home Depot cut a piece of plywood put a car carpet on top of it and then yeah it was sounded really great and they were like damn this is good <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking down and I see that uh, the strap with the tambourine is that an anklet yeah no that's uh, like a tambourine for foot tambourine so yeah. it's it, that goes on the other foot so I think yeah. like the right foot is like you know when you count beats it's like right foot is number one Tambourine's, tambourine is number two, so it's gonna be like one, two, one, two, one, yeah, two, yeah. so it's kind of, yeah. But by keeping the beat and everything that way, you don't need a drummer, and we all know drummers are a pain in the ass to deal I know, with. and they always uh, get lost, and uh, you know, they don't show. <laughs> yes, everyone has drummer troubles. <laughs> drummer true. troubles? That's, That's true. true. It's a very full sound. Thank you, yeah, and, yeah. And you're fortunate you could tour that way. I know, I mean, it's because it's very hard to tour as a, a, you know, as a solo musician and not be like a girl with a guitar, you know? You kind of want to have something more. So, um, so we've been working on this sound, and he also does all these little effects and uh, little harmony effects, and it's all live, no backtracks, no uh, loops or anything like that. It's just all live in the moment, uh, but he is mixing all of that stuff. Digital mixer, uh, pretty sweet, so you can just control everything from there. It's a uh, little bit of compressors, a little bit of delay effects. We have a little harmonizer box that we do harmonies from. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's, uh, tight little setup. So. I'm actually putting out my ninth studio album um, next month. Uh, it's gonna co be called um, uh, Center of the Universe, which is one of the songs that I play tonight as well. And um, so that is not counting all the live albums, the acoustic versions, you know, all that stuff that you put out. Like, I put out The Pulse of a Bear was my eight, eighth album um, that was out in 2019. And then I was going to tour here in the U.S. in 2020 with all the songs, but of course everything was shut down. Um, so we put out an acoustic version of that. But if I'm only counting like the studio albums, this will be my ninth album. You should all go to my website and get some free downloads because there is a new single that is out right now that we just released today, actually on Friday, uh, July 7th. And it's called Circle of Destruction. When we were recording this song, we were like joking about it in the studio that it was it sounded like a metal song, and and of course I'm not you know heavy metal or anything, but so we kind of thought it was like funny, but the title is not really folky, but mm -hmm. it's it's a very folky song, and it's a song that I wrote early days of uh, the invasion from Russia into uh, Ukraine, and um, so. You know, go and download that song. It's a pay what you want. You can get it for free if you wanna, or you can support the tour and, and all the breakdowns by paying, you know, a buck or two. So um, check it out on sophiatalbic.com. My, my grandmother was a piano teacher actually, so, um, so my first instrument was piano uh, and I, I played classical like music up till I was like 18 and then I, would, and I felt like, oh, you know, that felt so stuck in this kind of like box and I wanted to do something different so I asked my parents for a guitar for my 18th birthday and I got a guitar and I didn't know how to play it. So I started writing songs to teach myself how to play and that's what got me to here, you know, today. And, and so, um, yeah, but my, um, my parents were artists, but they were, you know, uh, painters and, and uh, textile designers and stuff. So not really musicians, but they always supported my art. But with, you said like, you know, your um, American music yeah. that you write. Um, what's like typical, what did you grow up with type of music in Sweden? Well, you know, I'm not that old, so <laughs> we got all the American music on the radio and stuff like that. I mean, when I was, uh, you know, 
early teens, I was a huge Madonna fan, you know, and stuff like that. But I also, when I was at, like, you know, my 15, 16, like, I, I really, I got into Woodstock and like all the 60s, 70s, like kind of American music, Janis Joplin, The Doors, uh, all that stuff. So that's kind of, that's my like, my love for music is that kind of music. Um, but also like, you know, singer-songwriters like Amy Mann, Susan Vega, Nico Case, I think she's wonderful. So it's, you know, you, you discover more and more, of course. And especially, you know, touring in the US, you get to meet other artists and you uh, listen to the radio and, you know, you find new, new voices. And playing music, I never had like a idea or dream of becoming like a full-time musician or artist, like or you know becoming famous or anything like that. It was, it was just like the love for the music, you know. I just wanted to play guitar and sing. Um, so this whole thing, like uh, leaving my day job and becoming a full-time artist, was kind of like almost happened on a whim. And uh, so that was nothing that was like in my background that I really dreamed about or anything like that. But it became the dream, you know. So I'm at the cutting room. Mm -hmm. uh, Frankenreiter. Frankenreiter, right? Who's? That, do you know who I'm speaking of? Frankenreiter. I don't know him. No. Well, we're yeah. supposed to remember this. I know. <laughs> he dresses, but you have a so explain your dress because they everyone there yeah. had similar dress to you okay. and the hat. So if you can explain, does this come with the music? Is this part of the music? Like, what comes first, the music, then the dress, or afterwards? <laughs> that is such a great question. I never got that question before. Oh my gosh, I don't know. I was, I think, I, I think you know, uh, it's the whole thing. Yeah. Like, identifying a little bit with the 60s and 70s uh, but also a little bit with like the countryside of the music so the hats and stuff but like the dresses is you know it's it's all like the 60s kind of you know hippie bohemian kind of style I just I just love it and I guess you know people who love the music love the style too I, I can't really say. It's a very interesting question. What about your hat? <laughs> Explain the hat. Well, so, the, it, I mean, I always liked wearing hats, but then I played South by Southwest a couple of times, and uh, there's this hat store called Warren Brothers, and I always played Warren Brothers. They had like this little in-store gig, and they would pay you with a hat, and they have really expensive hats. This is a Warren Brothers hat. Uh, and um, so, so I, I got the hat and I was like, I wanted to make it like mine, like a personal kind of thing. And so I, I grabbed a Sharpie and I drew the design on the hat and I started wearing it when I was playing live. And people came up to me and they were like, oh, I love your hat. Like, where did you get the hat? And you know, and so, so many people asked me this. So I actually started making these hats as a merchandise for my music. So it's, they're called Sofia Talvik Musical Hats. Okay. And, uh, and I make them as I go on tour, like a couple at a time. I draw the design by hand and uh, they're all different designs. This one is a snake, of course, but I do all different kinds of things. And uh, I buy the old vintage silk ties and turn them into hat bands and stuff. So yeah, that's kind of my thing. You can find all my uh, tour dates on sofiatalvik.com and uh, you go to the little menu and it says gigs. You find them on there. Well, I advise everybody to check out your show. <laughs> Thank you. So check much. out the dates, check out the show, check out sophiatalvik.com. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you for doing the Fuster Cluck show. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah. And thanks for coming to the show. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Our pleasure.